Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about a very touchy subject in skincare right now. The three most demonized and hated, and no, I'm not talking about the Kardashian sisters, but actually denatured alcohol and all other drying alcohols as a matter of fact. So for example, isopropyl alcohol and then fragrance and witch hazel and the effects that they actually have on our skin. Are they really as damaging and aging for our skin as all us skincare influencers, including myself, have been telling you and leading you to believe? Let's explore that. Starting with the most problematic and arguably the most hated in skincare right now is alcohols. So denatured alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and other alcohols that you might have heard of. Now I used to be very guilty of this. Like whenever I picked up a new product, I just turned the ingredient list and if I even saw just the slightest chance of a denatured alcohol or ethanol in the ingredient list, I would literally chuck it out. But now, actually, having done my research, having listened to other experts in this industry, which I will be referring to later on in this video to actually show you proof, I actually now I'm quite fine with it. I don't mind it as much as I used to. Of course, I'm still not specifically looking out for products that contain ethanol, but if there is and I do love the product, I'm completely fine with it. If you didn't know, there's actually two types of alcohols. By the way, I will be referring to Lab Muffins Beauty's blog. She is an amazing chemist, Michelle. She is the go-to for skincare advice and knowledge. Go check her out after this. But anyways, there's actually two types of alcohols. There's fatty alcohols, like for example, sterile alcohols, sterile alcohols, and these are actually humectants. They're gonna be moisturizing for your skin and actually very good. But these are not the ones that are necessarily demonized. The ones that are hated are actually the second type, which are actually low molecular weight alcohols. So for example, ethanol, alcohol denaturant, isopropyl alcohol. These types of low molecular alcohols actually are hated so much because they believe to have an stringent properties, so basically drying out your skin when you apply it topically, as well as actually having long-term aging effects on your skin, so actually causing a lot more wrinkles and premature aging. However, there are actually not many studies that actually prove that this long-term use of alcohol is going to be damaging and aging for your skin. But actually, interestingly, it's quite the opposite. Some studies actually show that there really is no long-term damage to your skin at all. They were actually performed not in vitro, but actually in real-life settings by nurses, and they were actually used using ethanol in high concentrations. But yeah, really there is no proof that alcohol is long-term damaging. Also, these low molecular weight alcohols actually evaporate very quickly on your skin. Like whenever you apply on your skin, it will evaporate almost immediately. So really there is not even any chance for the alcohol to actually start causing the damage. And also you have to keep in mind, you have to look at the formulation and the ingredient list of a product in general. So if for example, let's say there is denatured alcohol or ethanol in the ingredient list, but there are also is these fatty alcohols that we talked about before and also for example glycerin and other humectants and moisturizing agent and really they're gonna balance each other out and I don't know why I didn't think about this before I just jumped on the hate train of denatured alcohol but now again I'm a lot more open to having it in my skincare because I'll be there for him with open arms and open legs in an open mouth. And I have to say, I've now been using products containing alcohol for a while now, and honestly, I don't mind them at all. I actually love them. Especially sunscreens containing alcohol. For some reason, I was trying to stay away the most that I could from any sunscreen that contained ethanol or denatured alcohol in the formula, but actually, little stupid ignorant me, I didn't know that alcohol actually serves a specific purpose, especially in sunscreens. So on this topic, what are the actual uses of alcohol in skincare? Well, first of all, once again, citing Lab Massivin's Beauty's blog, it is an amazing solvent. So when we want to extract plant extracts or plant oils, we need some sort of vehicle. And yes, sometimes we can use water, but it is not going to be the most effective at actually dissolving and extracting these extracts from the plant. So actually, a lot of the times, ethanol is used instead of water because it's a lot more effective, again, at extracting them, as well as it doesn't leave any residue, any shiny film on your skin because it evaporates very quickly. So for that same reason that I was telling you, about, it also doesn't have any chance of necessarily affecting your skin if drying or aging it. Another use of alcohol, as it was mentioning before, is that it actually improves the application and the smoothness of the products and how well it actually applies on your skin. So this is actually very important for something as a sunscreen because you would want the product to actually spread evenly. So to actually make sure that you have an even coat and protection from the sun's UV rays, which are going to be damaging. Lastly, it's also a skin penetration enhancer. Once again, we're 
referring to lab muffins with his blog, there are some ingredients that can actually be a vehicle to helping active ingredients, whether it be vitamin C, a retinol, or salicylic acid, to actually help them penetrate a lot deeper into the layers of your skin. Another one is actually propendial. It kind of serves the same purpose as ethanol, even though ethanol is a lot more effective. And once again, linking back to before me knowing this, I really didn't understand why a lot of brands, really good brands that I love, actually put almost all the times ethanol in their salicylic acid serum. If you actually have ethanol paired with salicylic acid, it's a great combination because salicylic acid, as I'm sure we all know by now, is amazing for acne prone, oily skin types because it penetrates deep into the skin and actually cleans your skin from the inside out, removing pores, preventing future breakouts. It can also help with cystic acne. But when we pair it with ethanol, it's going to boost its penetration a lot better. So get rid of even deeper acne and purify and clean your skin even more. Not necessarily ethanol is needed in all the ingredient list of your products. And this is why it's only contained in specific ones. So yeah, I'm sorry I've been contributing to this fear of denatured alcohol in your skincare, but I will no longer be contributing as of now. Now moving on to witch hazel, an ingredient that very recently has been starting to get a lot of hate in the skincare community. Again, including myself. Once again, I'm sorry. But one of the reasons that it's very hated is because it has astringent properties. Same as with alcohol, it usually is paired with other humectants and moisturizing ingredients in a formula, whether it be in your creams, serums, toners, or whatever you're using witch hazel in. So it can actually be quite good for someone who has oily skin and wants to moisturize their skin, but also remove a little bit of that excess sebum and reduce that shininess. I personally don't look for that because you can see how glowy I am and I love to look kind of greasy, but you know, each your own. Now, yes, it still does have astringent properties. So if overused and used too often in your skincare, it could definitely lead to over drying and over stripping your skin. But that is just with everything, like too much of anything could be bad for you. Just like even water. If you drink too much, you could actually die. I know. The second reason why it's really hated is because it is usually distilled in alcohol. So once again, this is a plant extract. So this is why it is distilled in alcohol. It's a lot better vehicle and a lot better option than using water. But again, as we have learned, there are really is no harm if it's something is still to an alcohol. Actually, it's better because the witch hazel is going to be a lot more pure and a lot more effective on your skin. The third reason why witch hazel is hated so much is because it actually contains tannins in them. Now, tannins actually are in a powerful antioxidant, but it actually was believed to be very damaging in the long term. But once again, as Charlotte Palermino points out, she's amazing. You really need to go follow her. Green tea, pomegranate, rosehip seed oil all have higher tannic acid levels, yet they don't receive the same amount amount of ire as witch hazel. In many cases, they actually are lauded for the same reason as witch hazel. It can be powerful antioxidant and inflammatory properties. So yeah, this is totally true. I love green tea, but then why do I not like witch hazel? Green tea, by the way, also has astringent properties, so it doesn't really make sense that I don't like witch hazel, but I do like green tea. Once again, it was just misinformation, but with this video, I'm trying to educate anyone who, just like me, believe that these three ingredients in fragrance that I'm going to talk to just now were actually bad. They really aren't. Having said that, I still haven't found the courage to implement it and use it in my skincare. It just have been traumatized for so many years to actually think that witch hazel was bad. So I'm kind of struggling to implement it and I probably will never because I mean, I like green tea and I like others. So I don't necessarily feel the need, but either way, it's good to know that it's not bad. And lastly, moving on to fragrance. Now with this one, I have to admit, I still am a little bit torn. I don't know where I stand with this because just in general I personally don't see the point of having fragrance in my skincare products like when I'm using something I don't necessarily look for the experience yes I do look out for how it feels on my skin the consistency the formula ingredient list but I don't necessarily look out for the smell I don't need it to be a perfume if I want to smell nice I'll just spray up perfume so for that reason I don't necessarily care that much for fragrance but I do know the fragrance for some skin types it can be very sensitizing and lead to more irritation and actually allergic reactions. However, for most skin types, more like oilier skin types, which are more resilient in general, they can handle a lot more. Like my skin, I know that I can handle it. I know that fragrance isn't that bad for me necessarily in my skin. Still, it's something that you don't really need in the ingredient list of a product. It doesn't really provide any sort of benefit. Now, the word fragrance actually is very general.
general because fragrance doesn't really tell us what it actually is. The word fragrance is like a general term for a hundred or plus ingredients that don't necessarily need to be listed in the ingredient list. And for this reason, most brands actually tend to hide some of their special secret ingredients that go into the formula under the term fragrance so that if in the event another brand wants to copy their product, even if they were to just look at the ingredient list, they wouldn't be able to actually formulate the same exact product because they don't have the fragrance. Furthermore, we also have to take in consideration that there are some natural fragrances that are just normally listed in your ingredient list, not in the fragrance, but as lavender, orange peel, lemon peel, tea tree. All these actually can be sensitizing and very irritating for some skin types, especially the sensitive skin types. But since they are plant extracts, a lot of people could actually be allergic to some of these ingredients. Whereas on the other hand, if we see fragrance, that is usually synthetic fragrance. And so basically it's man-made. So there usually is not going to be any natural plant extracts and essential oils in it. So really there's less of a chance of that fragrance actually causing irritation and allergies in anyone. So this is also another reason why I don't like clean beauty all natural products because really most of the time something synthetic doesn't mean that it's bad. Like with fragrance there is synthetic fragrance which is a lot better than natural fragrance. Same as retinol. Retinol is a man-made synthetic ingredient. The natural version would be Bacuccio but Bacuccio is a very endangered plant and it also does not work as well as retinol. Actually I don't even consider it as a retinol alternative because it really doesn't have that much research to back it up. So really natural doesn't always equate to better. Anyways guys this is it the three most hated ingredients in skincare right now and the joke that I made at the beginning of this video just like the Kardashian sisters there really is no need to be hating on them because actually they're not that bad of a home. Anyways ma'am if this was a free video that you saw mine and you enjoyed it then of course give it a thumbs up but also make sure to subscribe and turn the bell icon so you don't miss any of my because let me tell you we're all about fighting acne wrinkles fine lines getting your skincare team down to tea and also reacting to celebrity skincares and just having a lot of fun in skincare and plastic surgery in general so if you're all about this then make sure to subscribe and join the random family because we would love to have you here Mwah. and also make sure to follow me on my instagram and on my tiktok both of my random there's a lot more skincare you're not going to see here that you are going to see there and also we can just deepen the bond that i feel going on already sis don't hesitate to dm me if you need any help and any advice on anything because i would love to help you out as well and now to my random who are still watching, you know what time to video is now. It's over the time word of the video. Oh, as this video was all about these three most hated Kardashian sisters of skincare. Wait, by the way, comment down below who's Kim, who's Chloe, and who's Courtney. I feel like the star of the show, which is Kim, is gonna be alcohol, and then the second most famous sister is fragrance, so that's gonna be arguably Chloe. And then lastly, it's gonna be Courtney, even though right now Courtney is becoming more famous than Chloe because she's hanging out with Addison. And Ray, but that's a whole other story, and I really feel like it's weird because Addison is 19 and Chloe is 48, but that's a whole other story. Anyways, the entire one of the video is actually going to be odiato, which is hated, and the plural, which in English there really isn't the plural of hated, but in Italian there is, sono odiati. So just instead of the O at the end, put an I. Ma'am, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? You're not clicking on this video. What you need to do is click one of these two right here. Just gonna be as informative, informational, without a serious video. But why do not remember to be random? and always random. And I swear, click one of them too, or I will just mix witch hazel, fragrance, and alcohol all together, pour it on your face, and then just light it up on fire. <laughs> I don't know. Click, please.